So capacitors and resistors together. That's where this whole thing has been leading up. So let's jump right in. Let's say we have a battery and we're going to talk in general terms. So we'll call it battery with EMF uh, E. It's connected first to a resistor. Resistance R measured in ohms and it's connected to a capacitor. Capacitance C measured in farads. Now the way that we're going to look at this is uh, two times. We're going to go T0 to a very long time. We call that infinity I guess. Um, and this is this is for hooking it up. I'm going to hook up the circuit and I'm going to look at what happens. So initially our initial condition here I guess would be uncharged capacitor. Um, as time goes on, we'll say a little later, we have some charge. Now, looking at how charges build up on this capacitor over time, we're going to have some positive charge here and some negative charge here. At the point where we have some charge on our capacitor, we're going to have a voltage on our capacitor. That voltage is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by um, the capacitance of the capacitor. So some little time later, I have a positive side of my capacitor and a negative side of my capacitor. I have this voltage which some little time later is going to point backwards against this battery, which means I'm not going to be able to push as much charge on it. So this is going to have an effect on the current. So we will say sometime later that there is a, a decrease in the current. This capacitor is now pushing against the battery a little later. Much later, we have a full capacitor. And we could say that the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the original EMF of the battery. Which means that the capacitor pushing this direction is pushing with a force, an electromotive force equal to that um, with which the battery is pushing. So at this point, much later, we have no current. As time goes on, we start to fill this capacitor and gain more and more and more charge and more and more voltage, such that the capacitance, I'm sorry, such that when this thing gets to the voltage of the battery, it's going to push back just as hard. We're not going to have any current anymore. Um, this is charging a capacitor. And looking at it, the capacitor could only have voltage equal to, sorry, the voltage of the capacitor could only be equal to the voltage of this. It couldn't be any more because if that were the case, uh, I'd have to have more energy than the battery started off with, and that doesn't work that way. So looking at how this works, if we look at the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, we started off uncharged um, and we eventually got full. So my charge sort of approached and eventually reached this maximum charge. We'll call that maximum charge Q equal to the capacitance times the EMF of the battery. Likewise, looking at the current as a function of time, I, I start off able for the battery to push against pretty much nothing. So I start off with full current, but as the capacitor fills up, it begins to push back and it decreases the current until it approaches zero. And this initial current is determined by the resistor. It's just going to be the EMF of the battery 
over the resistance. Now, the shape of this um, we're going to look at in just a second. But what's important to note is that the, capa um, the charge on the capacitor slowly increases over time. And the current in this circuit where we charge decreases over time. And also here it's it's important to note the relationship between current and charge. That's going to come in useful for what we're going to do next. And in this case it's positive. It's positive dq over dt because I am adding charges to my capacitor as time goes on. Um, when we get to a discharging capacitor that might change a little bit but for now it's positive dq over dt.